Hey everybody, in today's video we're going to take a look at how we can model a beanbag. That's one of those uh, beanbag chairs that you can see in a lot of uh, interior design uh, renders. And this is what I actually mean when I say this. So something like this. See? These guys. So they're basically a bag filled with something else. And it's very comfy to sit in. Alright, so we have a, this is another one, but this is actually a different type of a chair. And this is what we're going after here. So this or this. Alright, so I'm going to put it aside so I can use it as a reference. And alright, let's start. Now, uh, initially I was, uh, when I was starting this, uh, the idea for the video, I wanted to go ahead and build the chair within a Marvelous Designer. But then I actually came to the conclusion that it would be faster and easier if we just stick to Max for the initial draft phase. Alright, so here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to use a plane as a ground and I'm going to take one sphere. Alright, something like this. I just let me get my plane to the middle so it's centered. And I'm going to use one sphere something like this and let's just get it so it's I don't know 40 centimeters that means 80 diameter all right that's gonna work all right pull it upwards a bit and zoom in towards it okay we're gonna change um, my shading to shade it and on top of this I'm gonna put an edit poly and delete the top and the top and the bottom Vert vertex. Well, actually, before I do this, I might want to decrease the segment. So let's go to 16. You'll see what uh, why in a minute. All right. So this and this. Delete them both. And now I'm gonna select my border here. Then select edge. So I have them all selected. Deselect one of the edges on both sides and bridge. This is gonna leave us with a nice quartered top so we don't end up with triangles. So the same thing down here. Border, now select edge, deselect one of the on the opposite sides and bridge. All right, so this is gonna leave us with this kind of a look. All right, so now what I want to do here is I want to uh, get uh, the, the details that I lost when I decreased the number of sides. So I'm going to put on a turbo smooth on top of this. And we end up with something like this. Now, this is not the most ideal for the top, but it really isn't a problem as we're going to use the cloth modifier to help us shape the general shape of the chair. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and isolate. All right. So I'm gonna go and from my modifier list, I'm going to choose the cloth modifier. In case you don't know how cloth modifier works, I actually have made a video about it pre, uh, in one of my previous videos. So feel free and check it out. All right, so we're gonna open my cloth, uh, actually my object properties. And in here, in the object simulation, I'm going to add one object. And for that object, I'm going to choose my plane. So basically now I have both of these objects in the simulation. Now the thing is, Max sometimes you know, uh, has a tendency to actually screw up what we do. So once I add this, I'm gonna press OK. And now I'm just gonna reopen it. And now I'm going to assign what these objects are going to do in the actual simulation. First of all, I want to select my plane. I want to make sure that the plane is going to be used as a collision object. So we want, it, uh, we want the plane to be used as the ground plane. And the sphere, I want to use it as a cloth. I'm going to choose, well, let's go with silk. That should work. And once we have all of this done, just want to make sure, again, this is collision. This is cloth. I want to give it a pressure of, let's, Try something like three and press OK. All right, now if everything works, we should 
get a nice simulation. So let's see. Uh, like I said, if everything is working fine, we're going to get a nice simulation. Otherwise, we might get some issues. So let's try it. All right, issues. <laughs> All right. All right, let's go ahead and try this with a simulate local dampened. Again, I think we're having some issues, but it's slowly setting in. All right, so I'm going to reset my state. I'm going to go down to my turbo smooth and I'm going to increase the iteration. So it's going to give us more geometry to work with and hopefully that is going to help us resolve the issue with what we have here. So again, let's go ahead and try to sim sim uh, simulate local dampened. And it's slowly setting in. I'm going to reset the state one more time, turn off, and I'm going to go ahead and add one more iteration on it here. All right, this should give us even more control over how much. All right, so let's see, simulate dampened. It takes a bit of time until it sets down. What we want to achieve here is we want this ball to basically come down on itself. We want it to have some wrinkling happening here, but that wrinkling being the effect of the actual weight of the ball. And let's see if that is going to work now. All right, that's similar local. Now, as you can see, it is starting to fold on itself but the problem here at the moment is that the pressure that we place here on the sphere is too low so let's go ahead and try a six simulate local this should help reinflate it although still too low all right let's go even higher then let's try 12. It's reinflating. Okay, now it looks like a balloon. So again, as you can see, it all kind of boils down to trying to get that perfect pressure. All right, let's go one more time. All right, we can work with something like this. So I just want to have the rough outline of the actual ball all right the bottom is not really that important okay so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to put a uh, edit poly on top of this so i can start working on it now if i take a look at my bag over here i can see that in the middle we have this indention which is basically the place where you would sit so in order to get that shape all I have to do is get, get over back to the modifier list, put on a FFD modifier, 3x3x3, three by three by three, and select, so press on the one, control points, and select a few of the points, pull them inwards like this. Just make sure that you're pulling the right ones, then go with both of these. Just move them around until we get it to the point where it conforms to the shape that we want it to. So again, like this. Now I want these to go upwards. Pull them upwards like this. All right. Uh, let's see one more time. So I'm just trying to get it to the shape where it would be more or less usable. All right, this would be okay. Well, let me just take a, uh, some time to like tweak it in uh, shape and I'll be back as soon as I have it in, in the right position. All right, so here we are back. 
Uh, what I actually did is on top of the FFD modifier, I placed an additional FFD modifier 4x4 and I just pulled some vertices until I got something that would make, make me get this shape. So you could get a different shape, it really uh, isn't that important. I'm just trying to get a general uh, idea on what kind of a chair I would like to uh, achieve. It kind of got to this point where I get this. All right, so on top of this, I'm gonna put another edit poly. And now I just want to fix a few of the issues that you would probably get when you, you, uh, when you use the cloth modifier for a simple shape that would collapse on itself. And that is the actual ground of the shape. Uh, if you take a look at the, the base, you're gonna notice that you have a lot of geometry that's it's basically folding on itself and it might create an issue. But since this is gonna be um, on the bottom, it won't be visible. You can leave it if you want, but you can also choose to go ahead and uh, take the paint deformation here and choose the relax. With the relax, just go over on the bottom and make sure you don't have any nasty surprises waiting for you there. So let's go ahead and just click and drag until you relax the... As you can see, that mess, it's slowly unfolding and it shouldn't create any issues. Like, but again, I'm gonna say, it, since this is gonna be on the ground, it will not be visible. So it's a really good chance that it won't make any problems. But just for the sake of it, I want to have this be relaxed a bit so it doesn't do any kind of issues when we later try to put some uh, maps on it and we end up with a problem with the UV but I think this is gonna be okay all right this is okay everything is fine all right so now I can use this as my base in which I can start to add the wrinkles but before I do this I want to make sure that I have a proper UV unwrap on this chair. Now, in case you don't know how to do the UV unwrapping, I have a video for that as well. Actually, I made it, I think it, it was a week ago, so feel free and check it out. All right, so let's see how we're gonna unwrap this chair. So I'm gonna go UV unwrap uh, clean so we don't have any leftover UVs, and I'm gonna put a unwrap UVW. All right, so we have a clean unwrap UV. All right, the general idea is when you're unwrapping, you wanna make sure that if it's possible to place the seams somewhere where it would be the natural folding place for the chair. For example, if we take a look at this chair, we're gonna see that the seams for the chair where it's stitched, it's on the sides. So I can try and get it to be that way. So let's go i'm gonna first of all i'm gonna take the edge and i'm gonna select w the edge going down at the m bottom so this entire edge i even might take this one let's see this is going upwards nah we're gonna stick with this one so loop that one and make it a seam all right so the second one I can actually choose to go around the cap over here, but since this is gonna be the place where we're gonna uh, have the seating folds, I really don't think this would be ideal, but eh, let's go ahead and try it like this. Click, go around. All right, selection to seams, and then go all over. Oh, whoops, that's not going to go that way. All right, so we're going to use control and basic. Well, let's just go and do the point to point seam. So, point, go downwards to here, all the way to the bottom. Right click, convert to seam. And this should help us 
with opening up this chair. All right, so first of all, select the middle. I see everything is fine. I'm gonna use a quick peel for it. Put it in the side. Select this one, quick peel. Put it on the side. Bottom one, quick peel. Put it on the side. Select all of them. Make sure they get the proper size. Rescale elements. Hold down the options here. Put the amount to one and relax them. First of all, I'm gonna actually try and relax them by edge. And then I'm gonna switch over to polygon. This should help average out the size of them. All right. Stop the relax and apply. All right, now click here, back custom. So we have all of them in the one to zero UV space. Let me just try and get a bit more texture space and see if this is gonna work. All right, just a tad bit optimization so we can get a bit more texture space out of this. All right, again, put one here, put the next thing here. There we go. We have this chair unwrapped. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is with everything selected, I'm gonna go ahead and export what I have select and i'm going to choose to save it as an obj file and call it beanbag well let's call it base and save i'm going to leave everything as it is and i'm just going to export it done all right so with this we have the base for our chair in the next part, we're gonna go over and we're gonna add all of the little details, the wrinkles and everything else that we need. So I'll see you guys over there.